Mechanical engineering students at the University of KwaZulu-Natal have successfully concluded its first step towards developing a launch vehicle for placing satellites into orbit. The university's Aerospace Systems Research Group has tested a powerful liquid propellant rocket engine. Tests took place at the Danel Overberg test range in the Western Cape over a three-week period. To speak to us about South Africa's innovation in the space sector, we're joined by Jean Pito the leader of the Aerospace Systems Research Group at UKZN. Uh, Jean, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on that successful test. And I realized while I was reading through some of the work that there is a reason that uh, being a rocket scientist is associated with complicated things and also a reason why I am not said rocket scientist. So please uh, break down for us what this engine is, what it does, why it's significant and what the end goal is. Good morning, Tapuma, Annika. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Um, yeah, so it's, um, it's been a, an amazing feat, uh, at least as far as we're concerned. The engine is a liquid propellant rocket engine, so it uses liquid propellants and it's, it's kind of uh, the state of the art in, in the industry. And uh, it's being developed as a small modular uh, engine to provide power to a small satellite launch vehicle. So when you're designing a small satellite launch vehicle, or any launch vehicle for that matter, the first thing you do is you design the engine. And um, this is the first step we've, we've taken towards designing that engine. Uh, we've tested this prototype engine. Um, it's checked out very well. Um, it's lined up very well to our, our predictions. And uh, uh, that image is certainly not from us. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was all about, but um, it's basically developing the basis of the propulsion technology you need to launch satellites into orbit. It's, it's just pictures of stuff that, that looks yeah. Im impressive. Like, like fiery it's, stuff. Yeah, fiery <laughs> stuff that looks like it's from space. Uh, Jean, why is the development of space technology important, even in a country like South Africa, where we have more pressing issues? Sure. Um, that's a really good question. It's a question that gets answered regularly or asked regularly. Um, I think the, the fundamental thing is, is to remember that what this country needs so desperately right now is economic growth. Uh, without economic growth, you don't have taxes to pay for services. You don't have taxes to uplift um, many communities in need in the country. And there are different ways in, uh, to develop economic growth. The first is to use our resources that we have in the country, maybe use tourism, but uh, an, a very untapped uh, area um, in the country is high technology. And um, if you are able to develop high technologies, those are marketable overseas, uh, you can attract foreign investment, and uh, they typically are very good at stimulating a variety of other industries around that core. So the net effect is to result in economic growth, to increase tax revenues, and, and you use those tax revenues to, to grow the country and, and get people out of poverty. That's quite honestly how, how we see it. Uh, Jean, what is the state of South Africa's space infrastructure at the moment from uh, the human resources, the people we need to develop uh, innovation in the field to the actual uh, physical infrastructure, satellites, uh, rockets, etc. Yeah, so in, in terms of human resources, that's one of the things we uh, focus on so much at, at the Aerospace Systems Research Group. That's one of our key outputs is human capital. And, and the reason for that is human capital is underdeveloped in many sectors of what is typically called the new space industry today. Um, and we've got strides to make in, in those sectors. Um, in, in some sectors, we are, are at an international level already in the satellite uh, construction and, and sensor sector. Uh, we've got some world leading companies and products coming out of the country. But when we look at uh, launching um, satellites into orbit, accessing that platform that allows us to exploit the, the space economy, we are underdeveloped. Um, in, in many respects. However, we've got a lot, lot of legacy in the form of companies such as Denial Mix, Rheinmetall Denial Munition. There's a lot of expertise there that's about to retire or has already retired. So in theory, if, if the country is to set up a, a launch capability, we're embracing this time in that regard to develop the skills required. 
but as as much as it sounds like rocket science, it's, science, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, all six are, are covered in engineering courses around the country, and we have incredible uh, skills, uh, uh, incredibly skilled students, so we can do it. Well, Jean, thank you so much for joining us, and, and we hope to see more skilled engineers coming out of our universities and pushing our innovation in space technology. Jean Pito, the leader of the Aerospace Systems Research Group at UKZN, Annika Larson is so smart. She could have been a rocket scientist.